Hey 3B, today I'm going to read to you from my very favorite book about penguins. It is called The Emperor's Egg by Martin Jenkins and it's illustrated by Jane Chapman. The Emperor's Egg Down at the very bottom of the world, there's a huge island that's almost completely covered in snow and ice. It's called Antarctica and it's the coldest, windiest place on Earth. The weather's bad enough there in summer, but in winter, it's really terrible. It's hard to imagine anything actually living there. But wait, what's that shape over there? It can't be. Yes! It's a penguin! It's not just any old penguin either. It's a male emperor penguin, and the biggest penguin in the world. And he's doing a very important job. He's taking care of his egg. He didn't lay it himself, of course. Male emperor penguins are about four feet tall. The females are a little smaller. His mate did that a few weeks ago, but very soon afterward she turned around and waddled off to the sea. That's where female emperor penguins spend most of the winter, swimming about, getting as fat as they can, eating as much as they can, and generally having a very nice time, as far as you can tell. Emperor penguins eat mainly fish, squid, and tiny shrimp-like animals called krill, which leaves the father penguin stuck on the ice with his egg. Now the most important thing about egg sitting is to stop your egg from getting cold. Inside the egg, a penguin chick is starting to grow. If the egg gets cold, the chick will die. That means it has to be kept off the ice and out of the wind. And what better way to do that than to rest it on your feet and tuck it up right under your tummy? Which is just what the father penguin does. And that's how he'll stay for two whole months until his egg is ready to hatch. Can you imagine it? Standing around in the freezing cold with an egg on your feet for two whole months? Female emperor penguins lay one egg in May or June, which is the beginning of winter in Antarctica. What's more, there's nothing for the father penguin to eat on land. And because he's egg-sitting, he can't go off to the sea to feed. So that means two whole months with an egg on your feet and no dinner. Or breakfast. Or lunch. Or snacks. I don't know about you, but I'd be very, very miserable. Luckily, the penguins don't seem to mind too much. They have thick feathers and lots of fat under their skin to keep them warm. And when it gets really cold and windy, they all snuggle up together and shuffle over the ice in a great big huddle. Most of the time, the huddle trundles along very, very slowly. But sometimes, when the penguins get to a particularly slippery slope, they slide down it on their tummies, pushing themselves along with their flippers, always remembering to take care of their egg, and trying hard not to bump into each other. Even though the males keep the egg tucked up right under their tummies while they slide, it sometimes rolls out and breaks. And that's how the father penguin spends the winter, until one day he hears a chip. His egg is starting to hatch. It takes a day or so, but finally the egg cracks right open and out pops a penguin chick. Now the father penguin has two jobs to do. He has to keep the chick warm and he has to feed it. The chick is only about six inches tall at first and much too small to keep warm by itself. But on what? The chick is too small to be taken off to the sea to catch food, and it can't be left behind on the ice. Well, deep down in the father penguin's throat, there's a pouch where he makes something a little like milk, and that's what he feeds to his hungry chick. The father penguin can make only enough of the milky stuff to feed his chick for a couple of weeks, but just as he's about to run out, a dot appears on the horizon. It gets closer and closer and yes! It's mom! She starts trumpeting, hello! And the father penguin starts trumpeting, hello! And the chick whistles. The racket goes on for hours, and it really does sound as if they're extremely pleased to see each other. Every adult penguin has its own special call, like a fingerprint. 
chicks have their own special whistle, too. As soon as things have calmed down, the mother penguin is sick, right into her chick's mouth. Yuck, you may think. Yum, thinks the chick, and gobbles it all down. It's the mother's turn to take care of the chick now, while the father sets off to the sea for a well-earned meal of his own. About time, too. So I hope you enjoyed the book. I know I always find penguins to be such interesting animals. See you later, boys and girls.